if Jeff Christensen can be readmitted as a panelist in case there are questions for him. Thanks. Go ahead. It's working? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I guess my question to all the presenters who talk, um, do you think it's feasible to reinforce decision makers at the individual institutional level to provide stability for those people who are involved in uh, global infrastructures? Do you think we can have, what I mean is that, let's say, you know, what Guy was talking, we identify that, you know, currently there are about more than 30 global uh, biodata resources, and we know, you know, how many people are involved, what are crucial players there, and is there any way that, you know, we could reinforce, let's say, the, the um, policy making or something, or decision makers, to say, okay, those are crucial resources and those are experts and expertise, you know, that has to be preserved and has to be heredited. So is there a way that we can provide sustainability, you know, on the level of people who's providing those community services? So that's a really great question. And I think certainly speaking from my experience, I think we do do that and we have done that, but it is a hard, slow process. So, um, for example, my team has grown from basically one to 40 over the space of about 10 years. And that's because the appreciation in the value of data and digital has grown and elevated to the point now that we have a director who is very digitally literate and digitally aware of the value and the opportunity of how we talk about you know, what we do and how we do it. But I would also say that um, not only does that take quite a lot of time, but um, it takes, um, there are choices to be made about what an infrastructure, like for example, the Natural History Museum does. So there are some things that we cannot do or do at the pace that we might like to do because we have to sustain other activities and we'd be penalized by making choices about our limited funding if we drove everything in one particular direction. So I think, um, to some degree, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what the others uh, have to say on this, but to some degree, I think that does happen, but maybe not at the pace that we, as data enthusiasts, if you like, you know. Think, you know we, spend in, we spend an effort and time in training people, and then we're going to lose those people, you know, and then the expertise is lost. And sometimes, you know, it's it takes really great um, the period of time, you know, to to replace this peace bill. And of course, I mean, ideally there would be, you know, all the skills would be kind of heredited on time. So you will have people that, you know, they're not irreplaceable, but they are replaceable somehow. But still, you know, if it's a good expert, I think it's a really shame to lose this expertise. And I think we see it, we see it happening quite a lot. Thanks. Uh, does anyone else want to respond to that? Okay, David, well, you can just, just stand here. Um, yeah, I, I just want to say, um, yeah, I agree. where are you? Sorry, I agree. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Lost you there for a minute. Um, yeah, I, I do agree. I think there's an issue as well in terms of um, government funding in general globally and, and the kind of volatility around that. And I know that when we talk about the resources and trying to stabilize funding in that respect for sustainability but I know from personal experience and I'm sure you've had the same Vince that on a, a broader scale government funding overall is very fragile and often you don't know more than a year ahead at a time what you're getting and as, as I think we were touching on earlier you know you, you, that makes it very difficult to plan for these resources um, and yes ring fencing them is, is a challenge so I just wanted to add that. Okay let's move to the next question. Yeah, oh, yeah okay uh, guy wants to add something. Okay, <laughs> it was just a, a comment uh, just to, to to build on on top of uh, what is said already. I think that the the um, political environment is very volatile. I mean, it's um, it's um, changing constantly, even when we are proving and proving that the risk of losing talent, but not all, also, but losing the timing, the momentum for our work is, is clear. But in any case, the, 
the, the uh, national funders have uh, many other problems. So, of course, uh, and they are changing con constantly. So, a good way to to guarantee, or at least uh, this is what uh, we try to do in the most part of the research infrastructures at European level, the, a good way to 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 guarantee long term sustainability, financial sustainability, is for in, in a way to to. Um, to show value, we need to 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 really focus in the showing the added value of this research infrastructure uh, in the actual landscape of of a research infrastructure funded by at national or regional level. So you cannot uh, only demonstrate your value saying, okay, we are important because of that and that and that, or because our community is such community or is important for whatever. You need to demonstrate that you have a economic, a socio-economic impact at national level. And secondly, uh, no research infrastructure can stand alone any longer. So the research infrastructures has to work together, to, to cooperate together in a way that they find their niche in the actual landscape of research infrastructures and say, you know, uh, funding me, you will gain double than without me in the actual landscape. So you need to show to the, to the national funders that the And That actually under which the, the funder lies and, and and possibly even higher and then of course it's bigger than any one nation so it has to be multiple countries working together so i think the, the one of the, the the key things is indeed this this impact that that we've we've heard about um but it is extraordinarily difficult to develop impact stories so one of the things that gbc we're keen to do is to sort of recognize actually that there's a single well um one can describe a value chain from going out into the environment and sampling something, putting it in a collection, running some kind of, um, studying it in some way, running an assay on it perhaps, and, and producing data, curating processing and complying with standards and doing things useful with data to add value, um, emergence of uh, use of the data, emergence of knowledge from the data, and ultimately some societal benefit. That chain is actually common to all the different data resources. It's common to the different initiatives we've, we've, we've heard about. Um, we're all interested in different parts of it, but, but actually if we can pool our efforts on developing those impact stories, then we can all pin our particular value add to those to that impact um, but actually we can reuse and i think working together to save this it, it's a huge effort and that the institutions and the organizations that do it um spend a fortune and spend great amounts of time on this uh so we need to be efficient with just this part of it so just the the, the making the case for, for what we're doing uh, great thanks uh any other questions yeah, yep. uh, uh, I'm just curious to know how um, indigenous issues or metadata or provenance are being thought about in the context of the development and sustainability of your resources. Uh, I'll go first. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, we have had very early conversations uh, about the whole opportunity for what we'd like to do on that front in terms of BHR uh, and we have only managed to address some very basic points at this stage we'd like to do a lot more um, and it's certainly something we're actively discussing and it's being led by our collections manager the uh, conversation with partners at the moment um, but I yeah it, we know we have an awful lot we need to do um, and it's something we're very aware of and would like to do more but unfortunately I can't really add to plans at this time so, um, so for GBC, it's something we're watching with a lot of interest. It's not we're one step removed, so so we're not we won't be implementing this, I think. But it would appear in such I mentioned the um, sustainability indicators. So the, the the GCBR forum is working on describing what um, what what sustainability means. Included in there 
uh, standards, best practice, um, uh, ethical issues. And, and so we are, it could well be that these kind of things feature in the evaluations of, in future GCBR rounds. Um, we're not directly, we're looking for pioneers in a way in the databases that we're that we're trying to support we're looking for pioneers to, to work out how to how to fit this in um and with, i didn't mention it i have another hat with the european molecular biology laboratory and there we're as you know we're looking in particular at how we can include label bc labels and so on in, in what we're doing maybe just a quick comment from sort of the disco uk or the natural science collection side so um, we are thinking about this, and actually this is a positive element to, it's one of the reasons why we need these kind of infrastructures, because many of the challenges are really only realizable at scale. I think as we saw from this morning, taking a kind of project by project approach isn't really sustainable. So what we need is essentially some form of high level annotation framework that sits on top of that data and then we can develop projects on a sort of a case by case basis but using that common framework so it's actually these kinds of infrastructures that i think laying the foundations to solve some of those issues around cultural sensitivity with these collections and indigenous uh, rights issues because a project by project approach just is not really economically i think going to have the impact that actually we need in this space I'd make a comment too that when we started building Argo, we um, were very aware of Nagoya Protocol and were very concerned about what we were going to do in that space to help researchers actually understand their obligations and, and what they could potentially do. And in our Australian context, it's very hard because the information is... Um, like the genomics data, disparate and not very well coordinated. I loved your talk this morning. I thought the labels were neat and tidy and beautiful and um, something that we'd be really interested in leveraging. Um, for Arga Project, we have been able to leverage the profiles that Nat Raisbeck Brown's been um, building on ALA um, profiles pages. And so we have been able to index the profiles information. So um, one of the context pages, um, I didn't show it before, but we've built um, so that people can come and look at, say, the, the Noongar language group um, there and they can look at the, the species that are contained within that. So that they and they can also tell whether there's um, medicinal known uses or food known uses or other cultural significance. <laughs> so we think it's very important that we um, allow. And another thing that we're looking towards doing is um, it's very difficult in in the Australian context, but to allow researchers to, if they have a distribution of specimens, to to know what country it was derived from, and um, similarly, if there's no genetic data for any specimens that they want, they could at least know. What, um, what group to go and consult with to go and collect on that land. So um, it, is a, it is a very gradual process and it does um, rely on us having information that we can index. But I think um, we're making in, inroads into that and it's really important. It is becoming something that researchers themselves want to know more about when they go out in the field, which is a fantastic um, thing to see emerging. And um, hopefully we can, you know, contribute just incrementally towards that, yeah. Great, thanks. Um, I think uh, we're at time and we are hosting the brownies and the tea here, so uh, we we'll probably have to stop. Um, so thank you all very much for attending the session. Thanks to the speakers for being on time. And we'll be here and we hope to keep talking about sustainability over tea and lunch over the next few days. Um, so uh, thanks again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y